upon a time, there was a peculiar pirate ship in the Mediterranean Sea. This was no ordinary pirate ship of the kind. You may have heard about it before. No? Well, you see, this pirate ship, although it looked just the same as all the others before it, was of a new cybernetic design, entirely controlled by a super intelligent AI named Polly. Now, Polly preferred to take the disguise of a holographic parrot most of the time, as she didn't really like talking to humans, and desired to hide her super intelligence from the crew. This suited Captain Morgan Bitebeard just fine, as it meant that as far as his crew were concerned, he was the one who ran this ship. They all thought Polly was just a standard hollow parrot. They thought Bitebeard was basically godlike in his supernatural knowledge and handling of the Johnny Deep, which had swiftly earned its reputation as the fastest and deadliest pirate ship in the Mediterranean, and he wanted to keep it that way. Unfortunately for Bitebeard, however, his godlike powers were about to be severely tested. It was a beautifully clear day, and the seas had been calm all morning. But more importantly, Polly had informed him that the weather would be fine all day, and that there was nothing of interest within her sensory range. He was therefore caught completely by surprise when, with no warning at all, the sky in front of him ripped violently open and started spewing dinosaurs onto the deck. The vicious little ones he thought were called velociraptors. <coughs> Thank God, he wasn't sure that Johnny Deep could handle anything bigger. After a brief moment of confusion for pirates and dinosaurs alike, where the raptors stumbled about getting their footing, the pirates just stared at each other and the hole in the sky in silence. All hell suddenly broke loose. Raptors snapped at pirates. Pirates drew cutlasses and started slashing at raptors. The hole in the sky continued to spew more of the snapping little things, and some pirates either fell overboard or jumped to get away from the sudden prospect of death by extinct reptile. Captain Morgan drew his cutlasser and jumped down from the helm to join the fray, cursing under his breath as he did so. Polly, he yelled. Why the bleeping bleep didn't I get no warning about this? Ain't that meant to be what you're good for? Polly desires a soylent cracker, Polly said from his shoulder, a smug tint in her voice as she groomed her wing feathers. This was their agreed upon phrase for her to speak in the company of the rest of the crew, and it tickled her when he was brought up short by his own terms. She didn't particularly care that there were dinosaurs on board either, as they might be hurting the humans, but hadn't yet managed to do a speck of damage to her ship. Yarr! You would be bleeping saying that, wouldn't you? Captain Morgan Bitebeard dodged a lunge from sharp velociraptor teeth that instead passed harmlessly through the smirking Polly on his shoulder and quickly seared the culprit's head off his cutlasser. <coughs> he kicked the smoking corpse out of his way and carried on down the deck of the ship to where the real fight was. His crew had formed a ragtag battle in front of where the dinosaurs were spearing out. Can you not steer us away from the bleeping thing at least? Polly desires a soylent cracker, Polly said again, shaking her head as she did so. Though Captain Morgan was far too busy fighting another stray velociraptor to see it. He did notice, though, that the hole in the sky seemed to be keeping pace with his ship, and cursed again in response. As Bitebeard edged his way into the battle line, he was hailed by crew members up and down the line, asking why he hadn't seen this coming, what the hell was going on, and what on earth he had planned to do about it. Fight him more! He growled and led a demonstration, cutting down two of the things and tossing them overboard. They're coming on board faster than we can push them off! Long John Solder pointed out, panting as he tussled with a raptor that had somehow managed to lock its jaws around the safe handle of his cutlasser. If it carries on like this, the whole bleeping ship will start sinking soon! We've got to do something! And what do you bleeping suggest? Captain Morgan shouted back. I don't bleeping know! Aren't you meant to be the deadliest pirate in the Mediterranean? Long John Solder finally got control of his cutlasser and swiftly seared his opponent in two. Right down the middle. Before Bitebeard could respond to that, however, 
there was an ominous gap in the flow of small snapping reptiles, followed by the widening of the already quite giant hole in the sky, and a massive foot stepping through it. It stepped onto the deck. The ship immediately sunk a foot into the water, sending massive waves out in every direction. Everybody on the deck stumbled and cursed, those with peg legs more so, and grabbed onto something to steady themselves. A lot of the velociraptors, unable to hold on, found themselves tossed overboard. Captain Morgan Brightbeard would clearly see what was going to happen here. There was only a few feet of his ship left above water. If that giant dinosaur, whatever it was, put the rest of its weight on board, then they were going down quite quickly. His mind cast about frantically for something to do to stop this, when suddenly Polly launched herself off his shoulders and towards the towering reptile. As it began to pull its body through the hole in the sky, the Johnny Deep sunk alarmingly further. She screeched a battle cry at it and began to transform. By the time the dinosaur showed its ugly face through the hole in the sky, Polly's screech had become a deafening roar. And it found itself confronted with an almost perfect copy of itself, only twice the size. Polly gave a good show of anger as soon as it could see her, thrashing her giant tail about, swiping her claws and roaring again for good measure. Not being smart enough to notice that she passed through everything she touched, or indeed being aware of the existence of holograms. The dinosaurs turned tail and fled at this display, some of them jumping overboard despite not knowing how to swim. Not being smart enough, or indeed aware enough of the existence of oceans to know that they wouldn't make it to land. The pirates stared in shock and bewilderment as Polly shrunk back down into a parrot and flew back onto Captain Morgan's shoulder. Captain Morgan wasn't faring much better himself, but managed a stunned and cracked, well done, Polly, and a feeble air pad near her holographic head. Polly desires a soily cracker, she said. At once, all of the crew scrambled to bring her some. She smugly preened her feathers, maybe she could avoid talking to these humans, and still be the one in charge. Captain Morgan Bitebeard sighed, his time in the spotlight has been good while it lasted.